had someone tell me, I don't like the avatar in EXP world. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's your reason for not coming to the fastest growing brokerage in the history of real estate is because they give you an avatar. If you're a part-time agent or a new realtor struggling to manage your time in order to close deals, this video is going to be life-changing for you. Today, bring on Tyrell Morris, who as a part-time agent was able to close over 40 transactions, consistently ranks on the top producer list for his state at eXp Realty. And the most important thing to know here is that his other job is a 12 to 13 hour highly demanding job serving his city and he's still crushing it with the time that he's got left in the day and what we're going to do today is unpack not only some of the things that he did in the beginning in order to get business over deliver on value and serve a ton of clients but most importantly how to properly manage your time in order to make sure that you're being productive during the time that you have not just being busy and feeling like you're spending time but can't see the needle of your business moving and your tires just feel like they're spinning in place. Now, two quick things that I want to mention before we bring on Tyrell. Number one, I'm gonna link all of his incredible content, social media profiles below. You wanna check him out. He's just so much fun, so much energy and an incredible role model for this industry and so many other people. He's made an impact like almost nobody else. And number two, if you want to book a call to talk about partnering with Tyrell, I will also link his Calendly link below because he is one of the most supportive people that helps new agents and part-time agents exponentially scale their business. So with that being said, let's bring on Tyrell and not just show you as a part-time agent how to achieve massive success, but simultaneously, if you're a new agent with a struggling business, what you can do in order to see exponential growth going forward. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another incredible video where today we've got on a very special guest, one that's been a long time in the making and I'm super excited about because this man, Tyrell Morris, has an incredible story, seen massive success starting out as a part-time agent and balancing so many different things, but carving out a niche that has allowed him to build massive momentum. So Tyrell, dude, super excited to finally have you on and, and to dive into your story and show you know other people how they can emulate what you've done yeah thanks mike so much for having me on here um it's a, it's a great opportunity you know i entered the real estate game about three years ago um and i just had an itch that i bought my home and the agent said you could really sell real estate and i was like really had no idea that when i got into it i was going to have so much fun um and success yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And I think I'd love to kind of give some context as to your story because you've got quite a, a dynamic background, if you will. So I think it's really cool to kind of set the tone with where you started and and you know what was able to get you to this point. Yeah, definitely. So I just um, retired from a 21 career in public service, um, uh, in public safety, starting in the fire service and the disaster response, and then I moved over to the 911 space. And for the last six years, um, I've led the 911 organization here in the city of New Orleans. A crazy big place, 180 staff, 1.2 million calls a year. We have 450 festivals, some of the biggest ones known as Mardi Gras, um, biggest free show in the world. Um, but also culturally, New Orleans is a place that everyone wants to come. We see 20 million visitors annually, um, although we have a visitor a resident population a little over 400,000. Um, and so. That's been my journey thus far. Uh, I came to New Orleans six years ago, and now you know I love that I have an opportunity to grow my real estate business in the city because I want to love it. There's no place like the city of New Orleans. Um, and I, I started my real estate journey with a different brokerage. Um, I realized about a year in that myself and the broker were not um, morally aligned, and so it was time to move on. And so I decided to come to EXP, and it has changed my life. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to dive into that and, and we'll unpack that a little bit later. And, and I also think, I don't know if you want to go um, back just a little bit further too, but, you know, in terms of the upbringing, right? And and I think a lot of people look at people that have your success or my success and think that they were, you know, born into opportunity. And I, and I don't think that was necessarily the case for you. So I think that's kind of the last talking point before we dive into some of your strategy. Yeah, no, I mean, I come from humble beginnings. I am a project kid from the inner city of Philadelphia is where I was born. Um, and in my, my family, uh, you know, we, we were survivors. We knew we had to do everything we could to meet the objective. And that was keep the lights on and the bellies full. Um, but I think from that experience, I've come to appreciate the things that I do have, but also it has fed my desire to realize the goals and dreams that I do have. Um, my mother has always taught me one to dream big, 
um, small thinkers never achieve big things. And so some people may call me an overachiever. It's like, oh, you know, just you settle with the things you do have. You're blessed. I am absolutely. But it does not mean that I should skip out on an opportunity while I still have the energy to do it. Because in 15, 20 years, I may not have the energy to do this. So why do it? Do it now while I can. I love that, dude. And I think, you know, that's going to be a good segue into at least in context as to the success that you've had in real estate, because one of the things that obviously we jam out about all the time with the group in the Wolfpack, but I think is near and dear to both of our hearts is mindset. And we constantly talk about the fact that you can either have results or excuses, but not both. And I think there's people that come from situations like yours, and that is a crutch, that's an excuse, that's a complaint. Whereas you looked at it and said, this is fuel to the fire. I'm going to find results and this is part of my story. So do you want to kind of dive into just the mindset and, and what that's been able to do for, you know, your approach to chasing success in real estate? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. So my sponsor to EXP, Bonita, she always told people that, you know, if you have an excuse, just talk to Tyrell, right? Because here I am running a very large government agency um, and I still sold 20 homes my first year in real estate. Um, and so it is all about time management and planning. Now, don't give me for a second, like I had a very, very demanding job um, pull, pulling 60 to 70 hours a week, but I knew when I came home that it was time to build and pour into the, the desires and dreams that I had. And so, yeah, I was up till one, two in the morning, going to bed, getting up at six. It, no one that has great success is telling you it was easy. Um, so I've, I've, I've gotten to a place now where I can do this full time um, and, and really enjoy it. Um, but, you know, it's important to understand that no one care, no one's got can care more than you about your own goals and dreams. And we talk about resources and coaching and training. We can give you the best training in the world. But if you don't want to succeed, you're not willing to sacrifice. You're going to see a different outcome than those individuals that are grinding. I call I, I label myself as a real estate gladiator. Not that I go into a negotiation and just slay everybody. No, we just fight for the, the to meet the goal. The goal is to get you in a house in the next six months. God damn, we're gonna do that. We're gonna try everything we can to get you there. And personal goals for me. If my goal is to grow my business in six to seven different states by the end of the year, I got some traveling and some work to do. Yeah. I love that, man. I think I think that's so powerful. And, and you know, perfect kind of way to, to kind of open the door about that first year. I think that first year is so, so important because there are a lot of agents that are going to listen to this that are part time and they're saying, well, I can't do the deals. I don't have time after work. And again, it goes back to the excuses. But, you know, one of the things that's allowed you to thrive is your ability to manage time and be productive, not busy. So during that first year, when like you alluded to, it wasn't like you had some casual job where you can kind of like, you know, do real estate behind the scenes and your boss isn't looking like you were all hands on deck and still built massive momentum. So what did that first year look like for you when you were juggling both and after work, your full time job, what did those hours look like for you in order to build momentum on the real estate side? Yeah, well, I know my first year of real estate when I was with a different brokerage, I didn't know much, right? I just entered this space because a friend said, come over here, right? Um, But I I got to learn the business of real estate, the transactional things, right? But once I transitioned over to EXP, I kind of re-strategized. I re-strategized in a way where I knew I had to, I had to learn and build systems Mm -hmm. um, to points where I could multiply. Like I haven't cold called a day in my life. So I am not interested in working just the past time. Like I'd rather use my time to work smarter, not harder. And one thing about here at XP, we have incredible tools. I mean, I have I have maximized KD Corp to a to a T. You respond to my Facebook ad, you're gonna get a text from me in about five minutes to schedule a calendar so to gauge how serious you are. So only the most serious clients, the ones that are ready to go, are the ones that that are presented to me and take up that space. Um, but also we talk about hours, you know, for like showing these clients. I I had to show after hours, you know, six, seven or eight o'clock at night. Uh, weekend hours, but honestly, that's when most people wanted to go see property. So, but I was also very transparent upfront with my clients. Hey, look, I got a full-time job. You're probably gonna see me on the TV throughout this process doing something else, um, but I'm committed to you, but we have to restrict when we do this work 
And uh, no client ever said to me, you're too busy for me. Because um, the systems kind of made sure that I, as the agent, were engaged when it was necessary. Uh, and I was only spending my time on clients that are absolutely serious. And I think a lot of agents their first year lose momentum. They lose inspiration because they get a lot of dead end leads that go nowhere. I was, I had time for that. And so I really wanted to make sure that where I was investing my time was going to be the most beneficial for me and my clients. Yeah, of course. And I think that is the the point that needs to be driven home because, you know, we, we both talked to so many part-time agents and, you know, to, to them, you know, they're, they're always worried about this crutch of, well, if I tell them I'm, I'm, I've got a job, like they're not going to work with me because they're going to think that I don't have time. But I think you've done it beautifully in the sense that, and I did this in the beginning because I was part-time for the first two months, whereas you just set the expectation to be transparent up front. And if you set expectations, there's no way to get led to disappointment. And I think that's what you've done so well um, yeah. is be able to be transparent with your clients. There's there's so much beauty in that. And, and I love that you've been able to do it. Now, you also really carved out an opportunity to say a lot of agents are going after the easy listings, the easy clients, the easy opportunities, whereas you've taken a bit of a different approach and said, I'm going to work with the right people, but maybe the opportunity needs a bit of love. So, yeah. you know, do you want to kind of unpack the the importance of capitalizing on opportunities, regardless of what others view it as? Yeah. And so one thing about New Orleans, I've learned this is a city of, uh, of rebuilding hope. You know, we still we're still a community that is recovering from the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. We have parts of our city that still look like have been untouched from Katrina. But we have people in this city that love this city so much. They want to do something to one own a piece of this city, but also be a part of the revitalization. But what that means is working with buyers. And as we know, agents, if you had a choice as far as a workload, buyers or sellers, hands down, most agents will say sellers. I really, really enjoy working with buyers. I love the opportunity to be at the closing table, to hand them the keys, to take those photos, and for them to realize a dream that normally was not even in their sphere until they met me. Um, so that the, the work, work is rewarding and that drives me to the next space. And that's why over 90% of my business is referrals because you take good care of that person doing one of the most biggest decisions of their life. They're gonna make sure that when their loved ones, their friends, their family, they're passed to someone that they can trust and also that took, that's going to take the same care of them that you did with them initially. But also, Mike, I have learned to understand the process. And one thing about working with buyers, particularly buyers that are not the highest qualified, you learn real quick what the hurdles are that will take a deal. And so as you're, as you're entering or you're having an initial buyer consultation, I'm able to ask the question up front to make sure that we don't do a screening almost to say, do we have any risks of things that could tank this deal if the buyer does something down the road? Or I'm able to give very clear instructions. We have now entered the potential real estate transaction. Do not do X, Y, and Z, right? And I find that because we've had some deals kind of get shaky, right? Um, that I'm able to advise and be a much more well-rounded agent. But also because the city's right now in a rebuilding phase, I really have learned to work with investors. I myself have built my own new construction projects. Some I've rented and some I have sold um, just below market value to keep them affordable. Um, but I'm not buying grandma's house that you know she can't afford anymore. I'm buying vacant abandoned land that needs to be returned to commerce to grow the tax base so we collectively can enjoy a more higher quality of life. And so that's my strategy. And once I explain that to my clients, they fall in love with the strategy. They fall in love with me. But I also, um, again, am going to defend the, the interests of my clients at all costs. Even if Tyrell doesn't think that this is the best move that Tyrell would make, if I advise the client, they make a decision. What Tyrell thinks really doesn't matter anymore. But my job is to bring that desire to fruition. Yeah, there's there's so many powerful things to unpack there. Two specific things. The the first is like, you know, and you kind of alluded to this, which is that people falling in love with you. You know, you and I have have spent a couple of years together and we've been able to have the the incredible opportunity to meet in person. And, 
you know, when I when I think about you, I it, it just is this feeling of love and excitement and energy and passion. And like, you're just always genuinely a positive person that cares. And it, you also go the extra mile to create this customer journey of what it's like to be in your friend zone, in your circle as a client or a business partner, where you will acknowledge certain things and you will send little messages and all these little touch points that you can tell her genuine from the heart. And I think that's very rare and something that makes you stand out that a lot of people are kind of doing what is ever easiest in order to just get by with maintaining a relationship. Whereas one of the things I would like to unpack if you've done this by design, but you've almost created a customer journey with anybody in your life that is going the extra mile because you actually care. You're not doing it to get something in return, but you know that on the back end of that is a long-term sustainable relationship that brings repeat to referral clients. Yeah. yeah, Mike, you don't you don't have a 21 career in public service unless you care about it. It definitely isn't for money, I'll tell you that much. Um, you have to really believe in the work. And I um, will tell you, you know, throughout my journey so far, three years in real estate as a licensed agent, I have really met some incredible people along the way where they will come back to me and say, hey, remember a year ago we had this conversation? Well, it stuck with me and I did this and now my life is, is this. I'm not saying I'm some like magician or, you know, prophet, but ultimately at the end of the day, even and some call it a flaw sometimes, like even when others are throwing daggers at me, I'm usually not one to throw them back. I'll hold it, I'll grab it so you don't kill me, but I'm not I'm not gonna turn that around. If anything, I'll hold the mirror up so you look at yourself throughout that process. But you're right, I'm, I, I lead with my heart. Um, I, I try to do the right thing. I mean, I'm, I, everybody's imperfect, right? Um, but at the end of the day, intentions are pure. I don't think there's a malicious bone in my body, but I still am the real estate gladiator. And so if I find that you are being malicious, I'm going to call it out and meet you where you are. But you never have to worry about me doing something to harm anybody. I, I just it's, it's just not in me. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and it's easy to see that. And I think that goes really beautifully into the next thing. And then there's a couple other things I want to unpack in terms of your strategy. But it, you know, you touched on doing the right thing for your clients. I think as the market's shifting, as things are tightening and getting a little bit more difficult for the average agent that doesn't have systems and processes and maybe the drive, a lot of people are starting during these times to maybe do things that are in their best interest, not the client's interest, because they want that commission check. And that short-sightedness is very dangerous. Um, it's it's detrimental to the long term of your business. So do you want to kind of unpack, you know, the importance of saying, okay, even if I need to put food on the table right now, and this is going to hurt by saying, they're ready to pull the trigger, but this property I know is not right for them. You know, right. how do you approach that knowing where you want to go in business and life? Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that I had an experience yesterday, um, where I was advising an agent, um, and not one of ours. Um, but they were sorting out the listings for their clients in the order of the highest commission paid. Paid, and I said to them, "That's un you're borderline unlawful, right? Yeah. No, you, you're really skating the line there. What's ethically allowed, and ultimately, what's the desire here for your client to get the right home, or for you to get the right check? And if your desire is to get the highest check, you don't get one check. And that's gonna be yeah. it, right?" If you do the right thing and let the client pick and really present them options that best suits their needs, they're going to tell everybody how great you were once they're in this home and they love it. So you want one check or you want 10? You know, it's just you need to just understand that the value of doing the right thing will always supersede the quick win. Um, and so I, <laughs> even with the agents that I have recruited to EXP, you know, I'm not there to push them to, to, to for, for me, right? Yeah, we rev share is, is a big component of why people come to EXP, but there have been some months I don't get a, a single rev share check. But when, I, when that happens, I don't call the agent to say, why am I producing? My question is, what are your goals for the next three months and how can I help you reach them? And if your goal is to take a break, take your break. I'm gonna put my effort in somebody else, right? Yeah. If you tell me I wanna sell 10 houses in the next three months, okay. We're going to set a plan. I'm going to hold you accountable to that plan because it's your plan, not mine. Yep. No, I, I love that. And and as we all know, and, and so, you know, a lot of people commonly, you know, misunderstand the revenue share aspect is that revenue share is a byproduct of value. And, right. you know, if I help you scale, 
revenue share is essentially just income that would go to the broker that is a byproduct of me spending my time helping you grow. So it's a win-win situation. I think a lot of people misunderstand that. And, you know, one thing that I really want to dive into is, again, going back to your time management strategies, because a lot of people struggle with that they have the they have the tools they have the resources they could watch the tutorials on my youtube channel anywhere and they're not doing it and a lot of times people get to the end of a 10 20 hour day and they're like i just felt like my tires were spinning my business was going nowhere whereas you had a fraction of that time to invest into your business but you were moving the needle every single day so when you're looking at you know let's say you've got five hours to work after work like what what activities are you doing? How are you prioritizing them? And do you have any strategies to keep yourself on track? Well, I think the the goals for me are different by month. Yeah. Right. And so uh, you can't tackle everything at one time, right? If my if my goal this week or this month is follow up on my agents, really support them in a way. Um, every now and then I'll run the gamut of all six of them and schedule one on one calls and just do a check in. Um, sometimes a group text message on a Monday with an inspirational, you know, word, but sometimes um, my focus is to really understand what's happening in their space to make sure they understand the resources that are available to them. But Mike, you mentioned something about systems. My experience has been agents fear what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So give, give you an example, Calendly, right? Calendly to me was the best thing since sliced bread. The fact I can put all six of my calendars together on one and not get overbooked, I thought that I had received, I won the lottery, right? But also understanding Canonly and how it works. The premier version has other options. Will that help me? Um, really understanding KV Core. I think KV Core is such a beast. It's kind of intimidating mm -hmm. to new agents unless you really sit and understand or do the tutorials. But you got, you're going to have to make some mistakes, right? And set it up and go, oh, that didn't work out too well. Let me scratch this and start over. But that's the kind of work people are not willing to do to become experts. I could right now have a sit down with an agent and in two hours have their KV Core website totally set up, mobile app set up and be done, right? And get them first Facebook lead running and they'll get their first lead within six hours. It took me a while to get to that level of comfort, but now I can provide that service to anybody that wants to come join our team or join our group. Um, that, that, and that separates me from everybody else. But when we talk about how we plan our time, um, I knew this week I was gonna settle and get my mortgage loan origination license. Okay, that was all last week course. This is study for the exam. I passed the exam yesterday. Great, next. Next week I'm focusing on the onboarding and I, I think I'm gonna go sit for my general contractor license because you know I can save $80,000 on every bill if I have my own, my own license. It just makes sense. Um, but at the same time, I'm showing properties all day Saturday. And so, again, we also are in the industry and I will say, um, I call myself a millennial, I'm pretty young. <laughs> we don't plan to plan. No. The best teachers have a planning period, right? To yeah. plan what they're going to teach these children. I don't know why we as agents don't plan to plan. Mm -hmm. And if you don't plan to plan, you'll never plan and you'll never do. Yeah, 100% dude. And, and there's a lot of things I want to dive into there because I want to make sure it doesn't go over people's heads. The fact that you even just touched on having weekly or monthly themes is so, so important for people that are not just tight on time, are not doing deals as full time as well, where I think a lot of people are trying to tackle everything at once. And that's why you hear so many agents saying, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to go. And, and they're chasing all these rabbits instead of catching one. And I think that's so powerful. And I do this all the time too, saying, okay, one thing at a time, if you can channel all of your effort into one thing, you're going to build massive momentum. But when you're splitting that time across eight things, well, of course you're stressed out and overwhelmed. So not only that, but the fact that you've chosen those themes and surrounded them around foundational elements of your real estate business. I think a lot of people, even at best, if they are choosing themes on days, months, or weeks, they're doing it based on trends and shiny objects and dangling carrots. You said, I'm going to do it on my CRM. I'm going to learn follow up. I'm going to learn leadership, like all of these foundational principles that are what builds a sustainable, scalable business. 
And I love that you've been able to do that with things like KB Core because I tell people all the time, the number one reason why you didn't struggle to scale is they don't have a system in place to actually nurture what they get in terms of business. So right. that is that is so powerful, man. And I love that you do that. And, you know, I, I don't know if you want to unpack anything else on that, but I, I think people need to slow down to speed up. And yeah. the fact that, you know, they're running a million miles an hour and that's causing them to be overwhelmed. The fact that you just say, okay, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to reset. Sometimes you need a break. Um, but I'm going to come back with fire and I'm going to tackle these needle moving activities in my business. I will say one thing I think is vitally important for anybody, not just us as agents or real estate professionals, but anybody, you need to cut, you need to have an honest conversation with yourself about what you don't do well. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, so that therefore, you know, where to and put your energy to improve, right? If I'm, if I'm waking up every morning doing the one thing that I have already mastered and done so well, I'm not growing. I'm not learning. You know, so yesterday I got a random phone call from a broker in, um, in a particular state um, and it caught me off guard. And she asked him some questions about our model that, that, that weren't normal. All my practicing was me reaching out to the broker, right? A scheduled call, very safe environment. But I wasn't prepared yesterday for her call to me and the questions came out of order. Um, they were just all over the place. I appreciate the call. I'm glad she got to me. I was able to save the conversation so we can have a follow-up, but I hung up saying, yeah, I botched that. <laughs> it's not that I don't understand the model, but it's like how we deliver it, right? And how we make yeah. it make sense to other people. Um, and it just, so in my head, I was like, yeah, this weekend I need to spend some time just role playing with myself. Yeah, that's fine. We can talk to ourselves about objections and just questions. Cause she asked some questions I had never, ever been asked before. Yeah. I know there's an answer. I woke up this morning, like I should have said this, right? But now I got to write it down, right? Yeah. I got to make it part of the system. Right. So therefore, when I'm asked that question again, boom, here it is. Like, I, I knew you were coming. What's up? <laughs> I love that, dude. That's so awesome. And it's good because, you know, that that leads to, to two things I really want to just kind of echo here before we go on to a couple final questions, which is, you know, it, change starts with being honest with yourself. And we always talk about the only way to grow is that if you can actually be honest and so many people are lying to themselves where they're saying that they're doing all of these things. But when you look at their calendar, there's no proof of that. Or they say that they're you know, learning and growing, but like, are they actually doing what you just did and being very honest saying, dude, I screwed that one up. Like I dropped the ball and what am I going to do about it? And instead of saying, Hey, that was decent. Could have done better. That was, you're like, no, I got work to do. Um, and, and I love that about you. And, and another thing that you said about KB core and CRMs, that is one of the most important principles in this business is you said that you're going to make mistakes and a lot of people, as you alluded to, fear sucking at anything. And a lot of agents are good at a few things and they almost rest their laurels on being good at those things instead of understanding that in order to grow, you will suck no matter what you do, whether it be video, whether it be CRM, whether it be prospecting, follow-up, call, it doesn't matter. You will always suck in the beginning. But a concept we talk about is that if you learn from the no's and win from the yeses, you can never lose. So. Right. If you, if you do something wrong in KB Core and it goes sideways and you messed it up, well, now you just learned what not to do next time. And then when it does work out, you win. So there's no way to lose. And I think you've done so well at falling in love with the process of learning and finding those mistakes to plug more holes in your bucket. So, you know, as we start to, you know, kind of pull this full circle, there's three more things that I really want to unpack, which is, you have spent a lot of time learning the process, understanding the journey, learning your market on a deep level. I think a lot of people get into real estate, especially part-time agents, new agents, and their first go-to is, what am I doing to get a lead today? And right. it's just leads, 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 leads. And then they get a lead and they can't even properly service the lead because they don't understand the data, the market, the customer journey, the experience, any of that. Whereas you took the time to be a student of the game. Do you want to talk about the importance of learning that whole process? Yeah. And I think, you know, when I entered the real estate market, it was a real estate game per se it was just before the COVID-19 pandemic. Right. And I think COVID caused a mass entrance of agents because everyone's trying to be an entrepreneur. Right. 
but also the market had worked for those individuals, right? And so we really weren't required to be high quality agents to, to, to get business. That ain't the case anymore. And so, I mean, so you're, you're where I'm now in the process of doing client interviews where they're interviewing me, they're looking at several agents. Um, ultimately, usually they pick me, um, but because I'm, I have learned the market and I can speak with intelligence about why I think they should move in a certain direction, right? They, they may give me their preferences. I present some options, but ultimately they're hiring you for your advice. They're hiring you for your guidance. They're hiring you for your coaching. If that was the case, they would represent themselves on a transaction if they didn't need your information. But if you don't got no information, what value do you bring? Anybody can go on PDF and fill out a purchase agreement. I mean, this gives it to you online for free. The agent's value is the information, is the guidance, mm -hmm. is the, the ability to transact in a language that protects one particular party, right? Um, and so that's where I think we as agents have to really tighten our, if you're gonna survive, in this space, yes, we are seeing people leave the, the the industry, surrendering their licenses, not renewing because we're stabilizing right to what normality used to be. But at the end of the day, all the things that we used to do to go back to uh, winning deals, having good open houses, and I don't know if we ever be door knocking again, but you know we have to revert back to the strategies that once kept agents alive. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you have got to know the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's so important, dude. And, and I, I love that because, it, you know, that's one of the best ways to overcome the objection of, you know, being a part time agent and even getting to the point where like most people didn't even ask if I was part time, because when you can answer questions with context and depth and clarity, they don't ask how long you've been in the business or if you're part time or full time or how much time you've got, right? right? Because you're giving them the answers, the solutions to the problems. That's it. That's all. It's all they care about. And if you do that, it lightens your load and gets rid of a lot of the difficult objections. So, you know, kind of two, two contrasting questions that are really important, which is what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see newer agents making and what is your best advice? to new agents getting started. So starting with the with kind of the things that either you did wrong in your first year or that you see other people doing wrong in their first year, what does that look like to you? I think the biggest decision that an agent will make is their very first initial broker choice. Yep. Um, I made a choice with a different broker my first year and I still beat myself up about it. I didn't know any better, so I mean, I shouldn't beat myself up about it. One, I left so much money on the table. But two, I think about how my business would have grown bigger now if I had the resources that I have today. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that people understand that not all brokerages are, are made equal, but also not every brokerage is for everybody. Yeah. If you're interested in sitting inside an office and gossiping and not selling houses, then EXP ain't for you. But if you're interested in coaching, being held accountable, provided an opportunity to really define where your business goes, then maybe it is, right? Um, it, I had someone tell me, I don't like the avatar in EXP world. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's your reason for not coming to the fastest growing brokerage in the history of real estate is because they give you an avatar. Are you, yeah. You're not serious. You can't be serious about this business. I don't know if we even want you, right? Yeah. And so to me, agents that are just now entering this space need to really do an assessment of the type of coaching, mentoring, technology, compliance support, all those things that could tank an agent in the first year or not support their drive and momentum. Because look, a bad piece of tech your first year will help you, will make you think this is the way everybody operates and you'll quit, mm -hmm. right? Um, now that I know what I know, wow, if I, if I would have went back to it three years ago, I probably would have been quit my job. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, dude. I think that's so important. Like I, I actually recorded a short form video about this yesterday, which is that, you know, when looking at making a decision of a brokerage, I specifically stated in the video that the brokerage is not going to make you. However, it can make a drastic difference in your scalability, your rate of growth, and how you get compensated based on the time you put into your business. And I think that's so important because winners are going to win wherever they go. Losers are going to lose wherever they go. However, you can win quicker at a higher level. It's like, if you want to join, you know, the basketball team that's last in the league, you're still in the NBA, you're still on the field, you're still on the court, but right. 
you're last and you're not winning games and you're struggling to grow and you're struggling to further your career. But if you yeah. join the people that, you know, just won a championship, well, you're probably going to scale a little bit quicker and further your skill set. And I think that's yeah. why it's important. And the reality is clients don't buy houses because of the brokerage. They don't list yeah. the house because of the brokerage. They could care less. I, I think I'm in my, in my 70 transactions in my career so far, maybe one person asked me, what brokerage are you in? Right? Yeah. No one cares. They're coming to the agent because they want the agent experience, but if the agent does not have an army of a strong brokerage and resources behind them. That's where the broker choice matters. Not because your clients are going to come to you because they see a particular logo next to your name. They could care less. 100% dude. And I think, you know, bringing that uh, full circle of context, some of your best advice for, for new agents, um, based on some of the foundational things that we talked about for people that maybe said, Hey, I'm either just getting my license, you know, um, or I just screwed this whole year up and I'm kind of a new agent, uh, but a year in, you know, yeah. what are some of the key elements that you need to focus on in order to build momentum going forward? My, my biggest challenge I've seen, particularly agents that are not extroverts is you've got to practice that going to dinner, talk to everybody you come across. I'm, I'm not saying you're there to lead generate, but if you're, if you're not comfortable in front of a camera, if you're not comfortable speaking to random strangers, if you're not comfortable kind of inserting yourself into a space to be the expert on a particular topic, you're going to have a very difficult time growing your business, you know, because people that are looking to engage in a real estate transaction want to know that their gladiator is confident, mm -hmm. right? Well, if I walk into a room with my client, I had a closing table where I told my client, get up and go in the hallway. Yeah. What just happened ain't going to happen like this, right? And so he followed the instructions and thank God we did. We, uh, there was a, we, we had a, we were buying a property and there, the tenant was supposed to be moved out, but they were not. And we did the walk through the morning for the closing. Oh, they'll be out in the next two days. Oh no, 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 no. We ain't about to buy this house with this person. We don't know. <laughs> and it ain't about to happen. Right. And so the agent got other agent on the other side got very um, upset with yeah. me. I told my client, step outside. We're, we're walking away from this until, until we get this resolved. Right. That potentially could have saved him from significant liability. Right. And we talked mm -hmm. about it later on. He was like, I don't know if my, even many people would have told me to get out of the room. I'm like, I will. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but my, my, the struggle and advice for new agents is you have got to be comfortable around people. If you're not, if you're not one that can just, Hey, everybody into a room where no one knows you. I'm not saying you're going to fail, but you really, that should be the goal where you get comfortable with that space where you walk in, everybody know you're there. hundred percent, dude. And I think it, in a good way. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, we always talk about this, which is communication is the number one skill that you need to thrive in real estate. And a lot of people aren't focusing on that skill and they wonder why they're losing listing presentations, you know, talking to somebody, they don't get, you know, a, a, a second conversation from it. Um, and being able to work on that. And the best thing to do is put yourself in a public situation where you're basically forced to get outside of your comfort zone and develop it as a skill. It's a muscle, right? You got to build it. You got to put time into it in order to grow. So I love that, man. And you've got such an incredible, you know, story and wealth of knowledge to share with people. And, and it's been so amazing to see your success. The last thing that we always like to pull this with is, you know, you made the decision to obviously switch a brokerage. So when you look at why you either, you know, both joined our specific group, but simultaneously what people can get when they partner with you and Benita and myself, what does that look like? What kind of prompted the decision and what can people see when they align with Tyrell? Yeah, so I initially came to EXP because of the technology. Um, I love that, you know, one, the, the the higher commission split was attractive, but ultimately it was the technology around that was provided. The the, the wealth of all the Regis office space, the, 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 the office phone and the KB core particularly stuff, right? That was really attractive to me because I knew that was a, an element of my business that I was lacking. But once I explored the model even further and I realized that we were a borderless brokerage and I can really grow my business around the world, I really got excited. So now I have agents across seven different states in the country, right? And 16 of them total. And so, and every day I, I, I'm meeting new people to come join our, our, our group. Um, what you get, of course, with EXP is this world renowned, um, you know, beast of an engine behind you. But partnering with myself, you, Benita, and the Wolfpack, 
I really enjoy our, our weekly, especially our Monday morning mastermind calls. I call that my get right call. I get up in the morning, take my shower, have my coffee, do my stretch, say my prayers, and then bam, we're on the phone. We're setting our mindset for the week, right? Yeah. And when I marry that with what I've already set my theme for the week or the theme of the month, usually by Friday, I feel incredible. I'm like, all right, we, we, can, we can do this again, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, having access to you is incredible. Benita is incredible. But just our whole Wolfpack as a group, there's not been a single instance where I have not been able to turn to the Wolfpack and not get an answer, get advice, get help, make a connection, get a referral. Even I said, hey, I know you're not my state, but this is the first time I've done this kind of investment contract. You seem to know what you're talking about. Can you review it for me? Absolutely. I got incredible advice from that, right? Yeah. I've met some great friends in this group. And I know at the end of the day, because we all have bad days, yeah. right? I can turn to the pack to kind of get me over this hurdle and back to a space where I'm winning again. 100% man I love it it's it's been such a blessing to have you in the group and and to have your energy uh that we can all feed off especially in person at these events and you know I just think it's such a beautiful opportunity that now people get to align with somebody like you Benita and myself and Connor for free to get your systems my marketing branding advertising and lead generation you know all of Benita's incredible you know resources and support and and you just can't put a price on that for people. So if you're not where you want to be in business right now, if you genuinely had a hell of a year and it didn't go as planned like many people did, make sure you click the link in the description, chat with Tyrell and or myself, and we can talk about what it's like to help get you over that hump to take your business to the next level. So Tyrell, my brother, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your wealth of knowledge and your incredible story. Thank you, Mike. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.